Hello and welcome to the Fintech Monthly, filmed here at Borders and Capital's King's Cross HQ. This month's episode is a smorgasbord of treats, including the launch of Android Pay, expert analysis on the state of Fintech investment, and the tale of a company who are leaving the UK in response to the Snoopers Charter. Google announced Android Pay at their recent developer conference. By entering the world of mobile payments, they've redrawn old battle lines with Apple, whose Apple Pay service launched last year. The new service will enable users to make NFC and in-app payments using their phone. The developer community is happy too, as Google also announced a suite of open APIs which allow them to integrate functionality such as fingerprint payment authentication into their own app. As 78% of all new mobile devices shipped so far in 2015 run the Android iOS, Google's new payment service could provide a serious competitor for Apple Pay. Blockchain company Eris Industries have announced that they are to flee the UK to New York due to the so-called Snoopers Charter. A section of the bill stipulates that companies such as Eris will need to build backdoors into their solutions that allow agencies such as MI5 to access encrypted conversations and data. Eris believe that this is unnecessary and the law will prevent them from selling their tech into established financial services institutions. Preston Byrne, the COO of Eris, has said that cryptography overwhelmingly protects normal people and therefore it should remain free. Only time will tell if Byrne's rallying cry will provoke a mass exodus of blockchainers out of the UK. The CEO of ailing Chinese social media giant Renren believes that fintech may save the business. Renren, once dubbed the Facebook of China, has let its guard slip recently, with its stock price dropping to around one-fifth of its level at IPO. CEO Joseph Chen announced that the social network aimed at college students will transform itself into a social finance company. With student spending on the increase in China, it's now or never for Renren to capitalise on its campus market. Recent data shows us that there are now four times as many backers investing in fintech companies as there were five years ago. We caught up with expert Richard Gould of Rag Lawrence Graham & Co and asked him, are we in a temporary fintech sweet spot that's going to disappear or is this here to stay? If you look at the numbers surrounding the fintech boom, it is pretty staggering right now. Since 2010, the amount of investment going into fintech globally has trebled and around 14 billion has been invested in fintech startups in the last 12 months alone. But to my mind, I think that means we're at the start of something because those investors are looking for a return. And the returns are going to come when we've got a big wave of exits and IPOs. We're a couple of years away from that, but when that happens, those returns are going to follow, the investors are going to want to invest more money, and then I think we're going to be into fintech boom 2.0. Sticking with fintech investment, it was revealed recently that tech giants Intel and Google have made more investments into fintech companies than their colleagues at the big banks. We caught up with fintech expert and tech investor Rob Moffat of Balderton Capital to ask if these results were a surprise, and if so, should fintech entrepreneurs change their acquisition targets? I don't think any entrepreneur should spend much time thinking about getting acquired. Um, the old cliche here is that companies get bought, not sold. And if you waste any of your mind space as an entrepreneur thinking about your acquirer, then it's, it's a real damage to your business to do that. The reason banks are investing in fintech companies is as a hedge in many cases. Um, if this succeeds, then I'd like to prefer to be part of it and not be part of it. But actually, I probably prefer it not to succeed because that's more profitable to me as a bank or an insurer or whoever. This is a classic point in the tech cycle where corporate venture gets very excited where there's been a boom for a number of years, there's some big companies coming through, the VCs are doing well, uh, and corporates start worrying about pace of innovation. They're sitting on a bunch of cash, uh, and they want to sort of play catch up to VCs. Peer-to-peer -peer payment platform Cantox has raised $11 million in a round led by Partech Investments and ID Invest. Cantox peer-to-peer -peer platform offers an alternative to companies who usually use traditional banks and brokers for foreign exchange trading. This round also sees Patrick de Nonville, a former partner at Goldman Sachs, join the Cantox board. This Series B round takes the total amount of funding raised by the company to $19 million. Cantox have said they want to use the money to help fund European growth. 
Engineers in China have developed the world's first facial recognition ATM machine. Masterminded by experts from Tsinghua University and Sequan Technology, the cash machine starts scanning the cardholder's facial features as soon as they insert their card <coughs> into the machine. This scan is compared to images of the cardholder that are held on file. If the image doesn't match, you don't get your cash. According to the company behind the invention, the machine now possesses all the necessary certification, so it will be out in the market soon. If you're on holiday in China anytime, keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for tuning in again to the FinTech Monthly. To find out more, go to techcitynews.com. I've been Ben Goldsmith, and thanks for watching.